Over the past year, Vibe Coding has gotten a major upgrade with MCP servers, but there's a million of them. The concept is a little weird and setting them up is actually a little finicky, depending on which AI tool you use. So in this video, I'm going to give you a beginner friendly, I promise, overview of what MCP servers are, how to install them and set them up and manage them, how to use them, the whole nine yards. MCP stands for Model Context Protocol. It's actually a little bit different than the MCP server. Model Context Protocol means a standardized way for the AI tools, clock code, cursor, whatever, to connect with integrations, your tools, your note-taking app, your database of choice, uh, Stripe, Resend, all sorts of tools. There's a million bajillion MCP servers out there. It's just a standardized way for the AI to connect with them. That's all MCP is. Just think about them as integrations, if you will. Now, uh, for, I didn't put this in my notes, but there are a lot of directories. MCP.so is generally the one that I whip open first. If you've never used these, it could be handy to go here and just browse for a couple minutes. Like get a feel of like, what all could I use this for? Again, you're connecting your AI to your tools, your integrations. You can connect them to Firebase. Right, that's the uh, backend as a service that I've been using in this course, Firebase MCP server. There it is, right there. So my AI could go read my databases. It could search my databases and pull back some information. That could be really useful. It could connect to your Stripe account and do some things on your behalf. Read some data from your Stripe account on your behalf. Maybe I'll come back and actually install this one in a second because I don't think I have it. Yet. Before we do that, I'll share three that are pretty widely regarded as useful for everybody, just about. Context 7 is basically a documentation hub. So you're using Next.js or React or Python or Svelkit or Firebase or Superbase or Tailwind or Daisy UI or blah, 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 blah. Context 7 is just one little MCP server that you can install into Cloud Code or your AI tool of choice and just tell the AI, hey, Go search the documentation on MongoDB. Use context seven, and it'll go fetch the documentation without you having to Google it and then find the right link and then copy it and then paste it to the AI and that sort of stuff. It's just a documentation hub. Super helpful, I use it all the time. It's the only one that I have installed on my user account. We'll get to that in just a second. What do I mean by that? Another one is Firecrawl. It's a web scraper, basically just, if your AI doesn't routinely go search the internet, if it needs something, if it needs to find documentation without using Context7 or something like that, it needs to go Google something, Firecrawl is a good web scraper for that. Playwright is a, another one. Playwright has actually been around longer than MCPs, by the way, and you could actually use Playwright without an MCP server. It's basically a way to connect your browser, what I'm looking at right here, to your AI tool. So the AI could read your log statements, or if something is jacked up in your, which is what I'm about to fix in just a moment, like this, what is it? It's really ugly and it's not working. The Playwright MCP can actually take screenshots of your page and then analyze it. So Claude Code, using Playwright, can screenshot things. It can see what's happening in the browser. It can literally like click buttons and submit forms so you don't have to do that for testing. It's really cool. So good news, bad news. Good news is there's a million different MCP servers. The sky's the limit. The bad news is it's up to you to kind of figure out what do I need? What do I want? Do I need any of these MCP servers? Will it actually help me? I suggest starting with the three I just mentioned, as well as maybe your database provider. That's a helpful one, just to make sure that things are being saved to the database and reads are okay. It could be handy to give that to your AI and your AI could just like see right there. Oh, this was added to the, the database, you're good to go. Or no, here's an error, right? And it can figure it out on its own. And one more piece of bad news, now you have to install MCPs, which are a little different depending on which AI tool you use, by the way. It might be copying and pasting a code into your terminal for Claude Code. It's like Claude MCP add and then some more stuff. Or you might have to edit a little JSON file. In the case of cursor, cursor settings, cursor settings, and then MCPs, you can see which one is connected right there. There's one called browser automation. Don't actually use that anymore. Um, but you can access the little JSON file right here, and then you copy and paste in your stuff. It's a little finicky. The good news is that 90% of MCP servers you might use these days have their own documentation that says, 
just copy and paste this, right? So let me go do that Firebase thing because I don't have Firebase in any of my tools. I'm hoping, uh, I think I saw it on the page when I looked at this a second ago. Yeah, yeah. So there's info here and it says basic configuration and it gives the most popular AI tools. Mine is Claude Code. So I will go down here and do this. Claude MCP add and then Firebase. That's the name of it. NPX and then there's some options and commands on how it works. It doesn't look like I need an API key or anything right here. So we'll just copy this and go back into my terminal right here and then delete what I have there. Paste this in there, hit enter, added MCP server Firebase with command, so on and so forth. So that one was actually super easy. Some of them are not. And spoiler alert, I told you I'd mention this. If you're using Codex, it's not a JSON file. Codex right here, you can go to settings, MCP settings right there. And then you have to use a TOML file, config TOML and you have to like copy and paste in some stuff here. It's not the same format as JSON. If you have any issues with that using Codex, I suggest going to ChatGPT and saying, hey, I'm trying to use this MCP server. They gave me this code, dot JSON. It was the curly braces and stuff. It looks like JSON. Make this into TOML formatting for Codex. Codex documentation on MCPs is terrible right now. Maybe they'll get better at it, but right now it's terrible. So that's, that's basically it. You connect it, and if I actually close down my thing here, uh, Claude code. Well, actually, let's go Claude MCP list in the terminal. It says context seven, Firebase connected. So it's good to go. Although, how does it know which thing? Other? I'm, I'm guessing it'll probably, I don't know. I'd actually have to read the documentation. Here's what that JSON looks like, by the way. This is like the same thing. This uh, command right here for Claude code creates this in one of these like config JSON files. There you go. So if I were doing this in cursor, it would probably be, yeah, I would just copy this or copy this and then paste it into that thing right here. I would open up this bracket, paste this in, and that's exactly how you do that. One more very quick note. Each MCP server is different for what actions the AI can do. For example, I was scrolling down the Firebase page and this is the capabilities. There's a ton of them, right? It can get documents, it can delete documents, it can list out my collections, it can do some auth stuff, it can do this, it can do this or this. There's a million of them. So just so you know, each MCP server is kind of configured differently on what the AI can use it for, if that makes sense. So to use an MCP server, you basically just tell AI to use it. I have a prompt here. I want you to spice up the design of the table of contents on this page. Use Tailwind CSS. Use Context 7 to research. That's basically all you need to do. Sometimes these AI tools can actually fire these MCP servers off on their own, but most of the time you have to tell them, just so you know. They're a little bit odd sometimes. You can see it actually went out and got a, uh, some documentation right here. Can I look at that? Oh yeah, I can. There's like a bunch of docs here. Pretty cool. So this is what it went out and fetched without me having to go Google the Tailwind <laughs> CSS documentation, etc. So just for fun, I will let this uh, do its thing. We'll see what that looks like. And I'll tell you, that's basically it. MCP, just a way to connect your AI to your various integrations. Go Google your specific MCP server for instructions, because you'll definitely need that. It's gonna be some copying and pasting. It's gonna depend on your AI tool. It can be a little finicky, but just make sure you can see your MCP servers, like Claude MCP list and it showed you which ones I had connected, right? If it says connected, you should be good to go to start using it. So just for fun, we'll see what this looks like. If you have questions, by the way, drop them in the comments below this video, as well as the emoji that best describes MCP servers. I don't know what that would be, surprise me. Um, all right, so I did a few things, add an emoji right there on this page. There you go. So, you know, it doesn't look super perfect. It looks better than it did, actually, but I just wanted to show you that in action. So there you go. I'll see you in the next video when I have absolutely no idea what we're talking about. No idea. Ooh, security, super important topic. I'll see you in the next video. Vibe coding security is absolutely paramount. Vibe code slop is what lots of people make fun of. And if you don't consider security at all, your site is vulnerable and it's a huge thing to consider. So I'll teach you that stuff in the next video.